Derek, I could not find a tab in that Excel file that had multiple regression that I could recognize. But in scanning through and looking at the data, I found the tab where you did do the sort to identify homes with fireplaces and without fireplaces. And in effect, that you used a dummy variable and then selected to break that into two pieces, which is right. But in looking at that tab, I noticed up here that you had hidden columns, hidden columns. And when you're running regression, particularly with pH stat, you have to have the X values, the predictor values in adjacent columns. You can't have anything in between. So if you somehow selected from this spreadsheet, um, I don't see how you could select your X variables without getting either this column in the way, which would be full of, of text and would give you an error, or if you did something in here, um, you would, would have an error as well because you're, you're trying to span columns that are mixed values. So what I did... I copied the columns that I needed for the multiple regression. This is the simple one. I think it's all you need. You need the home price column, which is in dollars. And you should always uh, take a minute and format columns so you can tell what things are. Um, it really helps in readability. And you needed the living area in square feet. And you needed the fireplace uh, dummy variable, one or zero. So all we do then is go to regression, multiple regression, bring up the table here, and sadly, um, pH stat does not allow you to use the hotkeys to zoom around these big columns of data. At least I can't make it work that way. So I select that and I start dragging down, and I drag down to make it go as fast as possible. And we get down to the bottom eventually here. The hotkeys really make it much nicer, and I wish pH stat would modify to do that. So I've selected that. Before I move it, I click in that cell to make sure I'm now selecting my two uh, predictor variables, my X variables, and it does allow you to select going up. So I'm going to select those two cells. Again, the columns are adjacent, and hopefully it will get me up here. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. Now we're at the top, and we're back at our dialog box. Check to make sure that the first cells contain labels if you included them, and we did. So that's text, and that tells PHTAT not to include that cell, those cells in the calculations. We are just going to leave 95% there. You, by default, get regression statistics. But when you're doing these regressions for analysis, you really need to at least get the ANOVA. Uh, that really tells you what you need in a much clearer fashion. You can get the residuals and residual plots. I'm not going to worry about that now. And I'm not going to worry about getting the prediction right now. You know how to do that. But always get that ANOVA. And then click OK. Then we get the uh, computer to insert the ANOVA, which has the statistics on it over there and granted you can can decipher that but it, it I'm used to looking at this and I think most people are there is our intercept roughly nineteen thousand dollars and I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and make those dollars so they're much more readable you can see right away that the living area adds hundred eleven dollars per square foot as you go up but the fireplace loses $5,000 if you put a 1 in that predictor. So that is what you were doing wrong, I think. You just had uh, extraneous columns. But anyway, that's how you do the regression, multiple regression.